A deadly terrorist attack just over the Moscow city limits rocked Russia, killing at least 139 people as gunmen opened fire on concert goers. Совершенного в Москве предстоит ответить. Абсолютно ясно одно: ужасное преступление, совершенное 22 марта в столице России. On the evening of Friday, March 22nd, chaos erupted in Moscow. A terrifying event unfolded at the Crocus City Hall, a popular concert venue in the heart of the city. It was supposed to be a night of music and enjoyment as fans gathered to see the Russian rock band Picnic. But around 8 p.m., the atmosphere shifted drastically when a group of armed terrorists barged into the hall. With rifles in hand, they stormed towards the main entrance, sending panic rippling through the crowd of over 6,000 people. What was even more alarming was the sight of the attackers wielding Seiger machine guns, their rapid gunfire echoing through the hall. Interestingly, these machine guns were equipped with double magazines, which were secured together with insulating tape. At least 137 people lost their lives, and hundreds were injured. Now, the big questions are swirling. What exactly went down? Who's behind this horrific act? Was it ISIS, Ukraine? Or perhaps a larger, more sinister plan involving NATO and the US? Today, we're diving into these pressing questions in our video. Before moving ahead, we would like you to subscribe to our channel and like the video. Prima Facie In the aftermath of the attack, ISIS wasted no time in claiming responsibility. They even went as far as releasing body cam footage of the incident, which the BBC confirmed as authentic. Following the attack, Russian authorities managed to capture four suspects, all of whom were Tajik nationals. Strangely, they were caught while fleeing to Ukraine. But as news of the attack spread, the United States took notice. The U.S. Embassy in Moscow said that it had issued a warning on March 7th, advising American citizens to steer clear of large gatherings due to potential extremist threats. So, it's clear that the Americans were pointing fingers at the radical Islamic group. Okay, so closed? You might be shocked to know later in this video that things aren't as clear as they might seem. Obviously, many decided not to fall into the American trap, and Russia was one of them and Putin clearly came up with fury and a bunch of questions for the US. Putin, in his initial interview following the attacks, pointed fingers at radical Islamists as the perpetrators. But what came next wasn't favorable for the West. Before moving ahead, we would once again like you to hit the bell icon and flick the like button to support us. Angry Putin Strikes Back we're keen on uncovering who orchestrated this, he emphasized, linking the shooting to a broader intimidation strategy by Ukraine. Putin suggested, this heinous act might just be one chapter in a larger narrative of hostility from those who've been at odds with us since 2014, courtesy of the neo-Nazi Kiev regime. With these remarks, did Putin just lay bare the West's involvement? Ouch. Putin hinted at a potential connection between the attack and Ukraine, noting that the suspects were apprehended near the western Bryansk region, which shares a border with Ukraine. He suggested that there may have been arrangements on the Ukrainian side to facilitate their crossing into Russia. But there are also indications that the suspects might have been attempting to flee to Belarus, which also borders Bryansk. In response to accusations of ISIS involvement, Russia's foreign ministry spokesperson, Maria Zakharova, accused the U.S. of using the ISIS narrative as a distraction for its interests in Kyiv. This sentiment was echoed by Patrushev at a meeting in Astana, Kazakhstan, where he emphasized the importance of identifying the masterminds and sponsors of the attack. Ukrainian security services were squarely blamed for the incident, with Patrushev also citing numerous hoax bomb threats originating from Ukrainian territory since the attack occurred. In response, Ukrainian officials swiftly rejected any involvement in the attacks. Mikhailo Podolyak, a senior advisor to President Volodymyr Zelensky, made this clear in a tweet, stating, Ukraine certainly has nothing to do with these attacks. He emphasized, Ukraine has never resorted to terrorist methods, as they are always futile. Earlier that same Friday, Ukraine's military intelligence services took a stronger stance issuing a statement labeling the attacks as 
a premeditated and calculated provocation orchestrated by Russian special services under Putin's command. They asserted that the objective was to justify harsher strikes against Ukraine and to mobilize Russia further. But who's actually responsible? Why is no one except Russia pointing fingers at NATO? Let's break it down a bit. Let's investigate. If you're considering ISIS as the possible culprit, it's essential to understand its origins and activities. ISIS-K, or isis Khorasan province, is a branch of ISIS that primarily operates in Afghanistan and Pakistan. It emerged from Pakistani Taliban fighters seeking refuge in Afghanistan after being displaced by Pakistani military operations. With thousands of members, ISIS-K is a significant adversary of the Taliban, carrying out attacks in Afghanistan and beyond. Notably, they were responsible for the deadly suicide bombing at Kabul airport in August 2021 and a bomb attack in Iran in January 2021. While speculation surrounds ISIS-K's involvement in the Moscow attack, questions remain about who ordered it. Some suggest possible connections to the U.S. due to past involvement in similar operations. This could all be a strategic move by the U.S. to send a message to Russia, urging them not to escalate tensions further in Ukraine. With the ongoing conflict in Gaza grabbing global attention and U.S. attention split between two fronts, coupled with upcoming elections in November 2024, it could serve as a warning to Putin to tread carefully. The involvement of Ukrainian intelligence cannot be overlooked. It may also be linked to recent developments regarding Finland and Sweden's potential NATO membership. Just last week, Russia intercepted numerous drones, coinciding with warnings from the Kremlin directed at NATO regarding Ukraine. The Kremlin has expressed concerns, stating that relations with NATO have deteriorated to the point of direct confrontation due to the conflict in Ukraine. It's difficult to believe ISIS acted alone without assistance from the U.S. The teaming of the attack, coinciding with the nearing U.S. elections and Ukraine's ongoing issues, raises suspicions. Additionally, Russia recently released a map claiming parts of Ukraine as its own and dividing the country among other nations like Romania, Poland and Hungary. This attack could be viewed as a potential response by the U.S. and Ukraine to the map. Meanwhile, it's also important to see the analysis of experts on the matter. Experts on the terror attacks. Colin Clark, a terrorism analyst at the Sufan Center, pointed out that evidence indicates the four gunmen were skilled and trained. Watching the attack videos, their shooting technique, and even how they coordinated suggest they had proper training, Clark told Vox. It doesn't seem like they were just locals influenced by ISIS propaganda. I'd bet they were trained in Afghanistan. Sam Green, a Russian politics professor at King's College London, cautioned, just because the Kremlin may exploit the attack for political gain doesn't automatically mean it was a false flag operation. Patrushev, speaking to Argumenti, i.e. Facti, claimed Washington employs NATO to wage hybrid wars aiming to disrupt the governance of nations opposing Anglo-Saxon policies. In another interview with Argumenti e Facti on the day of the Crocus City Hall attack, Peskov accused NATO of waging war against Russia, echoing Kremlin propaganda used to justify Russia's actions in Ukraine and rally public support. Another American expert, Graham Allison, highlighted why an ISIS offshoot might target Russia. Islamist extremist groups like ISIS-K have long-standing grievances against Moscow, dating back to the Soviet war in Afghanistan in the 1980s, as well as Russia's brutal counterinsurgency efforts in Chechnya and the North Caucasus during the 1990s and 2000s. He added that Russia's support for Bashar al-Assad's government in Syria has further fueled animosity. Notably, ISIS-K carried out a suicide attack on the Russian embassy in Kabul in 2022. The involvement of the U.S. and NATO seems likely for broader geopolitical reasons, potentially linked to the wars in Ukraine and Gaza, as well as the upcoming U.S. elections in November 2024. 
But given that this attack marks the deadliest in Russian history, it's improbable that Putin will remain passive. Something significant may be brewing, possibly in Ukraine or elsewhere, such as Syria or the Middle East. The situation is complex, and we must stay vigilant to see how events unfold. Share your thoughts in the comments and subscribe to our channel for further updates and analysis.